Greetings, Hex and Counter players, to my look at Lock and Load Publishing Nations at War digital offering through their DLC White Star Rising. We are going to have a look at the scenario Just Beyond the Trees, which places us in the infamous Hurtgen Forest in November 44. As we look through the scenario briefing, I'd like you to note the formation markers. So the Americans have a 2 16th infantry formation marker, a 451 armoured formation marker, and one designated formation marker. Meanwhile, the Germans have one, being for the Schutzen Battalion 107. Further down on the next page, notice under length, it's 10 turns and we have two end turn markers. In the Scenario Special Rules section, Rule 2, 2 16th Infantry activates first on Turn 1, but its formation marker remains in the cup, so it has the possibility of activating twice on Turn 1. And 3, the Americans receive one designated formation marker. The marker is used to activate either American formation. In the upper left information panel is the virtual cup where these formations are placed. As indicated in the scenario special rules, the 3 3 16th infantry goes first in this case and may get a second impulse in the first turn. Then the formation markers are randomly pulled. An end turn marker may be pulled next, which means there would be formations that do not get an impulse this turn. They are guaranteed to have an impulse in the next turn. So this mechanic offers a randomness of when the formations appear or when the end turns appear. So it does add a lot to replayability as the formations are given the chance to move, engage in combat, etc. So a very interesting mechanic which we'll see play out. If you are an old Gronard from back in the day, where there was only uh, an attack factor and defence factor on the counter, these counters can look a little bit busy, but on inspection they're very logical and provide all the information you need to play the game in a very interesting and clear format, I think. And as you will see, a very clear and sharp on screen. So let's have a closer look at the infantry units, or what are known as the soft target category in the game. In the upper left hand side, we have three numbers, one, two in red and five. The red indicating this is for armour piercing firepower, so against hard targets. The first number is range of 1, AP firepower of 2, and a to hit roll of 5. The to hit roll means for the individual dice, it has to score that number or higher to score a hit on the enemy target. The genius of this is that you don't need combat tables to resolve the combat. During the electronic roll, you can just look at the to hit number to know if your dice roll has a chance or not. Below this with the yellow two, the two to five, is the soft target attack factors or high explosive firepower. Note that firepower in the Nations at War 
terminology means the number of dice to be rolled. So in the case of the HE firepower, two dice would be rolled and if one or both of the dice score five or greater, that is a hit. So on a two dice roll of five and six, that would be two hits. The next number in the light blue is the movement factor for covering so many hexes per impulse. The next pair of numbers, three, four, is the assault factor. Note that the three is on the same level as the two, so that means in an assault, three dice are rolled and four or greater to hit. So it doesn't take you very long to learn the nomenclature of the different counters and it's well detailed in the manual. This is the setup phase after the AI, as the German, has done their setup. By clicking on the Objectives button, we can see the objectives for the scenario. So as the American units, we are to occupy or capture Hubermont, Berismenel, the forest area, Nadrin, and possibly exit off the map. So to set up our units, uh, we first select the unit by left mouse button and then the game shows us the setup area. For stacking, it is two full squads per hex, plus the headquarters can stack freely, and also the support weapons stack freely. The number in the yellow blaze on the headquarters counter is the command range of the headquarters. So all units of the formation must attempt to stay within that range of the headquarters or face a in-command roll. The number in the top right in the green circle is the morale factor of the formation. If asked to take a morale check, the unit must roll equal to or less than that number. So the setup phase is quite straightforward. Uh, have a general idea where you want your formation to go and make sure that all your units can stay within the command range of the headquarters. So this is our formation counter which has been drawn from our virtual cup and as indicated in the scenario special rules it is the second sixteenth. We just press continue and the first phase is the fire missions. We can select a barrage and a barrage can be placed in any of the shaded light green areas. So you shouldn't uh, waste the barrage obviously and there's a great spot uh, just there to get two units within your barrage which is the central area you select plus the uh, hexes surrounding. So to get three uh, units in is a pretty good option. So a hit of a five or a six is a hit. Two sixes, another hit. You roll one off. Two hits with a five and a six. Didn't roll it off, so there should be two hits there. So that was a very satisfactory outcome for the barrage. 
We could run a second barrage. Uh, perhaps we'll hold that for next time. So we'll hit skip. And now we are in the movement phase. Simple as clicking on the hex. Uh, you can select one unit at a time, perform operations, then left mouse button and away you go. Then you say perform operations. Okay, in this case the enemy has the opportunity fire and rolls a six. So he's disrupted before he starts. So notice now that that unit is now marked as ops complete. So that means that it cannot fire again in this impulse. So we'll grab our truck with the anti-tank gun, perform operations. These are the hexes we propose to move. Then we perform operations and that time there was no opportunity fire. So to move two at a time, you just select both units, perform operations, left mouse button, perform operations. So the plan loosely is to, with our infantry, is to come around the top, capture Beres Middle, and then take on the forest hexes. The armoured formation will be primarily responsible for capturing Hubermont in the south. Form operations. Now this is our headquarters unit, so I might just move him to there. No enemy fire. move these two at a time. Notice as you move the hex the clear areas are your line of sight and if any me and if any enemy units appear in these line of sights uh, they can see you as well. With these infantry units I might uh, move them up from the south. And we have one remaining under here. Notice that the town hex there blocks the line of sight for these German units. So it's quite safe to move up, although they may they will be seen in this hex. But he is ops complete, so I'm gonna move him there because I want to move my armored units up there later on. So perform operations, we'll see if we get any opportunity for it, no, okay. Now once you've moved all the units of the active formation, which is indicated up here in the info box top left, then you press finish activation, another card or formation card is drawn. So it's the German unit, hit continue. So the units that were disrupted rolled to come back into good order. So now we're being offered the chance to have opportunity fire against the German units that are moving. So we can select this one here. We'll select the go with the machine gun. We can spend for fate points to remove the ops complete marker because remember these guys have already moved once in this turn. They have had their impulse. But we can use the fate points which we might as well. And then the range is five hexes. But in this particular instance we have the machine gun, the heavy machine gun, and that adds one to the range and one to the dice roll. 
So we'll give it a punt. Because we are on a hill, we are looking down, so we can actually see over this level one obstruction, which is the town hex. So we'll have a go. And we roll a five, which is not a hit because we needed a six to hit. So they've had a shot at us. Right here. So now in the remember in the special rules section it said the second sixteenth might get a second impulse in this turn and we have been given that opportunity. So we hit continue. The ops complete markers go off. The first phase is to check disrupted units and get them back into good order. But that failed for our mortar unit. We get the fire mission come up, so we'll grab our barrage again, and I think we'll go for this hex here. I always like having a barrage on three hexes. One hit. Five or six to hit. Oh, two hits, two sixes, and he rolled one off with a six. So one hit. One hit again. So the Americans are rolling very well, and the Germans didn't roll off, so they scored a hit and are disrupted. So notice in this hex here, we have a mines marker. Uh, in the digital version of the game, the mines are placed uh, during the setup phase. Our engineers can uh, demine a hex automatically. They don't have to roll or anything, whereas infantry units have to roll to get a successful demining of the hex. So coming back out, we'll continue our move with our truck. And my idea is to move him up here. Uh, should I move him in a clear spot? Perhaps I'll put him in that tree there till we get uh, some more infantry support. So we don't have to rush into combat or anything like that. We can uh, take our time. So we check our disrupted unit here, which is our mortar, unfortunately. So we say perform operations. Oh, there we go. I wasn't sure whether he let us move towards the enemy. Normally disrupted units cannot move towards the enemy formation. But as these hexes are out of line of sight, of the axis units uh, it can move which is very handy right here so we grab these guys so so let's have a look in this hex here Right, so the Germans have an improved position. Now these positions uh, are really strong. What happens is there's, uh, the improved position can automatically roll off one hit. So if our infantry, for instance, attack them, so we'd have a two dice roll, we'd need a six and say two fives or two fives and two sixes so the first hit would be rolled off and the second hit would hit 
and it is difficult uh, to get that roll. <laughs> sometimes you get it but as you can imagine the the odds are not good so these guys are really tough but the secret with improved positions is you really need to think do you really need to take that position now which is central to this scenario is that concept I think a lot of gamers uh, new to this type of gaming would see this as a, a serial problem where you take this hex and you take that hex and you take that hex but sometimes as experienced grownards will tell you uh, you've just got to go around and surround people or uh, try and make the enemy units or your opponent's units move by your movement having said that we'll grab our infantry unit here perform operations we're going to move one hex into the town and then we're going to do what's called a move and fire. So we'll just try a ranged attack on that hex. Perform operations. The German unit or the Axis unit throws for a defensive roll. Doesn't score a 5 or a 6. And we score a 5 but it's rolled off because it's in an improved position. But the real goal of that move was to occupy that hex, which is the first of our victory locations. So what we're going to do now is remember where our, always remember where your headquarters is, so he's up there. So at this stage, he cannot see anyone. Oh, he can see the units over here. Now that's very important for our barrage option in the fire mission phase because it's the areas that are spotted by headquarters or reconnaissance units are the locations where you can place the barrage. So that's something to remember. So perhaps this time... No, we'll press forward. We'll keep the momentum going. So let's see if the German units now have their opportunity fire. No, okay, well that's fine. So then we'll move another one. These two guys. Okay. We can fire a move as well. Or we can just fire, for instance, at this unit here. But I think at this stage, notice how we can see that unit through his hexes lit up. So that's one of just a decision you have to make. Uh, you can fire a move or move and fire or just move. So what I am going to try and do at this stage is occupy uh, victory location hexes. No opportunity fire and we move. So we check all of our 2nd 16th infantry to see that they've all moved or all have the ops complete marker on them. So that looks like the case. So at this stage we say finish activation. And another cheat is pulled and it is of course our armoured unit. So we press continue. We have a barrage left and because we have I wonder if I can put him there or go back down there. Just wondering if I should try and barrage this headquarters unit. I tell you, we'll go, we'll stick with our three. Three is better than two in this case. So one, I don't think I'll have to check what that means. I think it means a miss. <laughs> oh wow, that's a bit unfortunate. Right, so let's grab our units, uh, our engineers will push forward 
towards Hubermont. Perform operations. So as you can see, movement is quite easy. So here we've got a mixed stack. We're going to have engineers, which has a movement of three, the central number, as you remember, and the armored unit, which has a movement of four. Oops, so we select them. Perform operations. One, two. Uh, then we go three. Now see how we've got one of four of the M4A1 Sherman left to move. We can select him and then tell him to move to this hex here. Perform operations and away they go. Uh, these guys here. Three. Right, so we don't have much choice here because of the stacking, but if we select one, we can move one into there and that will do us. Perform operations. Then we have our steward, which we'll bring up from the south side. And notice he has six movement points, so we go five, and as soon as we get to that hex there, notice how he gets this, the uh, circling red icon there. We could at this stage do a move and fire. One, two, three, four, five. So this guy's range against hard targets is three. In... Uh, Nations at War, you can fire extended range, which is three, ti three times, is two times the range normally. But you have a penalty for that in that your hit number is raised and your, I think the firepower goes down. So we won't do that. We can still move to three. So at this point, we need to make a decision. At three hexes, we're 50% of the movement expenditure, and we can either fire at this chap, or we can keep spending our movement points. So we'll have a punt and have a uh, have a shot. Oh, we throw a one, so that's uh, as bad as it gets. So that's definitely a miss. And that completes the movement for turn one. So we hit the finish activation because all the movement of the active formation has been completed. Finish activation, end turn marker comes up, continue, and then the end of turn, the second end turn marker comes up and that indicates then it's the end of the turn. So we hit continue. Now for turn two, the Schutzen Battalion 107 has been drawn. So note, remember in the first turn, it was our infantry formation that moved first and then the Schutzen Battalion. But the this time the Schutzen Battalion was drawn from the Virtual Cup, so they get to move first. As defender, that can be good and it can be bad. It's just uh, what happens. So he first tries to rally units by throwing below the headquarter value, which didn't throw very well at all. So that's good for us. So at this stage of the presentation, I'd just like to have a bit of an overview of the game. Uh, as you can see, uh, the mechanics of playing the game are quite easy, uh, yet it has enough detail to make it interesting. Uh, the manual provides plenty of examples, so I would say this in the Hex Encounter style is quite an easy game to play. And the digital version of the game 
I would say is much quicker to play than the physical version because the game looks after all those line of sight issues it makes sure you doesn't don't overstack uh, and it does all that administration which when you're playing the physical game you have to keep the, all those factors in your mind in fact you could pick up this game and without knowing the rules at all I think you can start playing and have a bit of fun with it it's all driven by the mouse once again you don't need to know all the factors initially but if you want to play the game well at some stage you have to visit that rule book the look and feel of hex encounter games given they come from that physical background a lot of computer games have that war on the golf course feel and this map is a little bit like that the counters are fantastically clear and precise and easy to read which will be a big positive to many of us dinosaur gamers perhaps uh, with the look and feel and the cleanness of the counters it is a little bit uh, sterile I would say I know that's probably an unfair uh, comment but perhaps in the paper game you have the tactile feel of the counters uh, I think which gives it a bit more character and I think the digital version could perhaps do with a little bit of um, texture if you like for my liking that the counters for instance are a little bit flat I'd like to see a little bit more feel in them but these are minor aesthetic comments in the Gronard's range of games certainly this would fall within the very good beer and pretzel style of game where you could sit down easily play the game have some very nice puzzles I, I will add and it's a great introduction to uh, physical playing if that's what your uh, goal may be further down the track and I think from playing this style of game players could very well be attracted to having a try at the physical game which is very enjoyable but you have to take on the labor of all the miscellaneous admin rules I think as the digital game is quicker it could do with larger maps and larger scenarios uh, because I think the game could lend itself to uh, larger scenarios and that could very well be in lock and loads uh, penciled list of things perhaps to do for this series I think the series has a lot of potential for those of us out here in gaming world which enjoy the hex encounter style I know that there are some players who don't like uh, the dice aspect of the game and complain there's mysterious forces at lock and load uh, conspiring against them but anyone who's played these games long enough will know that uh, the dice have a life of their own and you can get a crazy set of bad rolls and sometimes uh, good ones but the players tend to notice the bad series more than the good ones of course being human nature but that is just the nature of these games um, and you have to sort of roll with those punches of fate something else I'd like to see perhaps in this game is a play by email feature I th really do think this game will suit uh, play by email and there are plenty of uh, game sites around which I think would pick it up the Blitz Wargaming Club or the Wargaming Society I think uh, they have a lot of uh, hex based PBM gaming so perhaps that crowd might be interested in, in this style of game I think the series could be an exciting addition uh, to the online world 
At the moment, being in early access, it's uh, cheap as I think for what it potentially offers. Looking forward to seeing what Lock and Load do with this title going forward. Certainly, the bones and the structure are there for an excellent series. Uh, it's a bit of a uh, the ugly stepsister at the moment. Uh, I think Lock and Load are concentrating on Lock and Load Tactics Digital at this stage, and the sales probably indicate that is where they should be striking. Uh, strike when the iron is hot and that type of thing, and that's also a very good series of games as well, so well worth a look. So thanks for having a look at my introduction. I hope it perhaps spikes your interest to pick up this title and have a look at it. And the most exciting thing on the horizon for this scale, I think, is the Lock and Loads World at War 85 series, the Cold War. So I'm certainly looking forward to that one and seeing how the series goes. So thanks for watching once again. Uh, enjoy your gaming and I'll catch you next time. Cheers.